Okay then gang, so now what I'd like to do is take this sign in page because currently we can only press this button to sign in anonymously and turn it into a sign in form where we can put in an email and a password and then sign in with those credentials instead of anonymously. So we're going to refresh this page now and the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of everything inside this child property right here inside the container. So we're going to keep this scaffold and the app bar and we're going to keep this padding but get rid of the raised button right here we don't want that anymore and instead in here we're going to create some kind of form so the first thing i'll do is a form widget and this form widget is going to allow us to do some form validation later on now inside this form widget we need a few different things so i'm going to create a column so the child will be a column and inside this column, we're going to have a list basically of different form field widgets. So let me now open up this column and say the children property should be a widget list. And the first thing inside this list is going to be a sized box. And I'm only doing this to give myself a bit of breathing room. So this is going to be height 20, like so. Okay. So after that sized box, we want our first form field, and this is going to be a text form field for the email. So we'll say text form field, and then inside this widget, we need to specify what's going to happen when this form field changes. So we can do that by adding an unchanged property. So let me enter down and say on changed, and set that equal to a function which takes in the value and then inside that we'll do something later on, okay? So this value is gonna represent whatever is in the form field at that point, and unchanged means that every time a user types something extra into the form field or presses a delete key or a space or something like that, every time the value changes, this function is gonna run and get us the value that is currently inside that form field. So after that, we want our next form field widget. But before we do that, let's do another sized box. So we get some space between these different form fields. And then we'll do another text form field because this is going to be for our password now. And inside this one, we want to do pretty much the same thing. So we'll say on changed. And that is going to be a function which takes in the value. And we'll do something in here later on. Now inside this password field we also want to obscure the text so when we type into it over here we don't want to see what we're typing in case someone's over your shoulder trying to find out what your password is so what we're going to do is add on another property to this called obscure text and set that to be true so if i save this now we should see so far we have two form fields and we can type something into this one and also we can type something into the next one, but when we type in the next one, it's obscured. So you only see the last letter for a couple of seconds before it obscures. And now someone trying to steal your password standing behind you can't do so anymore. So there's two form fields now. We also need a button at the bottom. So let me come down here and do a comma after this. I'm going to do another sized box and the height is going to be 20 pixels again just to give us a bit more breathing room and then we're going to do a raised button so raised button like so okay so inside this raised button first of all i'm going to specify a color now i want this to be a pink color so i'll say colors dot pink and then strength of 400 we also need a child property which is going to be the text that sits inside the button so we'll do a child property that will be text and then inside this text i want to first of all specify the text itself which is going to be sign in and then we also want to do a style property which will be text style and this is so we can change the color of the text uh, because by default i think it's black and we want to be white so colors dot white okay now after the child property i also want an on pressed property which is a function that's going to fire when this button is pressed now this is going to eventually be an asynchronous function because at the end of the day what we want to do at this point is go out and interact with firebase to log this person in or to sign them in and that takes some time it's an asynchronous task so i may as well label it as asynchronous now so now we pretty much have this all sorted so let me save this now 
and preview. And now we can see we have these two form fields, email and password, and we have a sign in button as well. But at the minute, this does nothing. And also, when we enter some information into these fields, it does nothing either because we have nothing inside these unchanged functions right here, and also nothing inside this unpressed function. So, first of all, let's do these things. What do we want to happen when a user starts typing in here? Well, what we want to do is track what the user is typing into those fields and then maybe store the current value of those fields inside some kind of local state variable. So what I'm going to do is create two pieces of state right here and these pieces of state are going to store these two fields or these two values that are in these fields. So let's say text field state and then underneath we'll do a string for the email and set it to be an empty string to begin with, and then also a string for the password, and that is gonna be an empty string to begin with as well. So now, when a user starts to type into this one, the email, we want to update the state so that this email property is now equal to the value, whatever is in the form field at that moment in time. So to do that, we can use set state, set state like so, and this accepts a function, and in that function, all we want to do is say email is equal to value. So we're taking the email state and we're setting it equal to whatever the value currently is inside that form field. That makes sense, right? Now we want to do something similar for the password. So let me copy this dude and paste it down here. And this time we want to update the password bit of state with whatever the value is. So now we're tracking those two things. So now what we could do at the end when we press this button is print out the state, the password and the email. So let's do that. Let's say print and first of all the email. So we're referencing the email state right here. And then secondly, we want to print out the password as well. So let's do that. Print password like so and save. So now I'm going to open up this debug console and I'm going to delete these things. In fact, I'm going to just refresh over here so we can start from scratch. And now if I type in an email like Mario at the net, oops, that's not the at symbol, at the net ninja.co.uk and then down here we'll just say test one, two, three, four. If we sign in now, we should see those values logged down here in the console. So now we're able to keep track of these values. And in the future, instead of just printing them here, what we'll do is take those values and interact with Firebase to sign that user up with their email and their password. That makes sense, right? Cool. So now we have the sign-in form. We need to also do something very similar for the register form. So let us first of all create that file over here inside the authenticate folder. So new file, and we'll call it register dot dart and inside that file first of all we want to import material so material like so and then we want to create a stateful widget so stful tab and we'll call this register and then down here we want to return some kind of template again now i'm not going to write all of this out again instead what i'm going to do is just grab all of the return statement here the scaffold and copy it and I'm going to paste it right here instead of this container. So paste that in and you'll notice at the minute we do get a few errors because this doesn't exist in this widget, the email state and the password doesn't and down here as well. But we'll address those errors in a second. First of all, I want to say here register or rather we'll say sign up, not register. Sign up to brew crew and then down here on the button instead of saying sign in wherever the button is there it is we'll say register like so and then we have to create this state so let me go back to sign in where we have that state at the top and grab it and paste it over here so inside the state object paste that in I'm also going to grab this thing because we don't need it just yet, the auth service, but we will be using it in the future in both of these widgets. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that in here 
as well so we can use it in future tutorials. Now obviously we've not imported that so let's import that first of all. So import and then we need to go into the services folder and we also need the auth file inside that. That's the auth service. And then I think that is just about it. So if I was to save this now, then I should, yeah, there's no more errors. I should be able to go to the authenticate widget and instead of returning the sign in, I'm gonna return the register widget like so. Obviously we need to import that. So let me come down here and say import and it's gonna be inside screens and we want to go inside authenticate and then register. So let me save that. And now we should see the register screen sign up to Brew Crew, and this should work exactly the same way. I'm just going to enter in any old rubbish and register, but let me open up the debug console first of all so we can see this register. And now we see those values down in the console. So this is all working so far. We have a couple of different forms now one for signing in and one for registering, and we just need to now hook this up with Firebase. But before we do that, I want to do a couple more things first. And the first thing I want to do is allow the user to be able to switch between the register screen and also the sign in screen, because if they have an account, they don't want to re-register, they want to sign in. And if they don't have an account and they're on the sign in page, they want a way to get to the register page instead. So we need some kind of link and I'm going to place it up here in the app bar. So we'll tackle that switching between these two views in the next video.